Okay, so uh, here's the plan that I'm supposed to be executing. The, the goal of the plan is to determine two equations of exponential functions graphed on the same Cartesian plane with conditions that include that their y-intercepts are no more than 10 units apart, but they intersect at a point whose x-coordinate is very large. Very large is kind of subjective, but it's in the question. So, uh, step one of the plan is to write down two exponential function equations and only use variables and don't actually use any number values or constants. So as you can see here, I've written two equations, uh, uh, exponential function equations. Now step two says to choose any real number and substitute it in for the first equation as the vertical translation or the C value. Integers are highly recommended because they're easier to work with. <laughs> okay, and <laughs> since their y-intercepts are no more than 10 units apart, Using the first equation of vertical translation, add or subtract any real number that is greater than 0 or smaller or equal to 10. Now, this kind of worries me since one of the conditions of the plan is that the x-coordinate of the point of intersection has to be very large. However, if one uses two points that are uh, two vertical translations that are very close to each other, it makes the point of intersection, the x-coordinate of the point of intersection kind of small. So, I'm going to choose a decimal value instead of an integer. I'll choose 4.2 as my first C value, and then I'll choose 4.3 as the next one. Because the only conditions were that you have to add a number that's equal to, the, that is greater than 0, or equal to, or smaller than 10. So 0 0.1 fits that condition. Now, for the second... Uh, the, th the third step is that uh, it says since the exponential functions intersect at a point whose x-coordinate is very large, they must intersect in the first or fourth quadrant because in the other two quadrants the x-coordinate is negative, which makes sense. Therefore, the base value of the, both the equations must be any real number larger than 1 but not too large. Don't know what that means. It's kind of unclear, but not too large. Okay. Therefore, pick a small number. Okay. <laughs> Once again, kind of subjective, but okay. Preferably around two or three. So I don't know if I have to choose two or three. Well, it says preferably, so I can choose anything else. And substitute into both equations as their base value. So a small number, let's say five for both of them. Because I have to use it for both of them. Now, step four says, as for the leading coefficient slash parameter, choosing, choose any real number that is larger than zero, but smaller than one, so a fraction, and substitute it into one equation. Then I can use the same number or choose another number that is, that is also a fraction and substitute into the second equation. And the, the reason it says that the reason they should be fractions is so it's to guarantee that there's a vertical uh, compression, which makes the point of intersection of the x coordinate of the point of intersection uh, larger, which does make sense. And okay, so for A, I'm going to choose, uh, let's say, 1 over 4. Then for B, I'm going to choose, mm -hmm, I mean, sorry, whoa, whoa, A, uh, A again, I'll choose 1 over 2. Okay, now, step 5 says, if I want them to have a translation over the x-axis, I can make them negative. However, uh, that's, I think that's basically just purely aesthetics and doesn't really matter here. Okay, so I'll, I'll just keep them for now. Maybe uh, I can do another example with them, a negative. Now, as for the horizontal transformations, it says to choose any real number that is larger than 0, but smaller than 1, so a fraction, and substitute it into both equations so that there will be a horizontal stretch. Now, it says that the reason that there needs to be a horizontal stretch is to make, to once again mimic the effects of uh, vertical compression and cause the Point, the point of intersection to have a larger x-coordinate. So I will choose, uh, let's just say 1 over 4 again, because it's a fraction. So d for both values, is, well, for both equations is 1 over 4. Now, step number 7 says, ask for horizontal translations. Choose a number that is greater than 0 and substitute it into one equation. It just says greater than 0 and does not put any other limitations whatsoever. Now, it says that this will give both equations a horizontal translation to the right, thus guaranteeing the x-coordinate of the POI to be a larger number. Makes sense. It says, if you are giving your equations different horizontal translations, make sure that the equation with a larger vertical translation 
has the larger horizontal translation and that the equation with the smaller vertical translation has the smaller horizontal translation. And this will guarantee that the equations will intersect, which does make sense, since choosing otherwise will cause two equations that do not have any solutions, a uh, system that does not have any solutions. Okay, so for, uh, what is this value? For, oh, sorry, this was, this was K, not even D, wow. <laughs> This is D, okay. So for D of the first one, I'll choose 1. And for D of the other one, let's refer back to the conditions. It's greater than 0, and that's it. So, uh, you know what, let's just choose 100. YOLO, right? Okay. So, uh, now I'm going to substitute these values into the equations, and then I will be back. Okay.